Uh, welcome to the Animal Tone podcast. It's really lovely to have you here, uh, Steve. Maybe we can start out with a kind of really brief idea of what you think biosecurity is, and then we can start to uh, pick that apart a little bit. So in your mind, uh, and for, for us who don't quite get it, what is biosecurity? The simplest definition that I would use, and I still think the best, but it doesn't it doesn't it, it, it invites lots more questions as you'll as I'm sure you'll go on to ask. The simplest though is the, the practice of making life safe. So how do we make life safe? Um, now there's lots of versions of this, and one of my interests is the way in which that kind of work, the work of making life safe, if you like. So we've all uh, lots of people have been through COVID. We tried to make our lives safe. We wore a mask. Um, we hopefully got vaccinated, etc. All those kinds of things, to me, are part of making life safe. But they all, and, and this is the spatial argument now, I think, that is key to a lot of my work. Um, and I was very influenced by, you know, working with Doreen Massey many years ago to think seriously about space. There's lots of ways of making life safe. And the conventional one, or the one that if you go to... Um, any farm, let's take a poultry farm at the moment, because we've actually got a massive zoonotic epidemic, if you like, if, to put it in simple terms, of avian influenza at the moment. And it's mm -hmm. rife across uh, Northern Europe uh, and the North Americas and so on, and, and spreading south as we speak. If you go to any poultry farm, no, they'll, they'll tell you that they're doing biosecurity and they're doing the version of it which involves the face mask, right? So that's what they're doing is trying to keep things out. Mm -hmm. So they're using barriers between themselves and the outside world. And that's one spatial way in which we think biosecurity. And actually, it's quite a predominant one when we're talking about animals, um, is that we try to separate animal bodies from the outside world. So if you go to a poultry farm, when they say they're doing biosecurity, uh, it means you're probably not going to get onto site, OK, because they, they see you as a risk of bringing disease on. They will try and cage or, or house the birds that are inside the farm so they don't have any interaction with the outside world in terms of wild birds, for example, mm -hmm. who may bring in the avian influenza virus. So that's a very conventional version of biosecurity. The twist, though, that I think is important, and maybe we can go on to discuss, depends on your questions, is that keeping things out isn't the only way of making life safe. You also have to worry about what's inside, all right? So as we've been through COVID, a very good example is we could have shut ourselves away and maybe if you lived in remote locations, that was relatively easy, but we then had a kind of uh, an epidemic of mental health problems, other kinds of problems. We're now picking up all sorts of problems uh, mm. in the UK and elsewhere about, you know, the failure to pick up early signs of cancers, et cetera. So, wow. When you're thinking about making life safe, as my stock definition, you have to think, I think, about what's both coming in from the outside, what's transmitting, if you like, and maybe try and do something about that. I'm not saying you can just let yourself get COVID and be fine or let your birds get avian influenza and everything be fine. It won't be. Um, but you also need to think very carefully about what's going on inside. What are you containing? In mm -hmm. some ways, is this just another excuse to do industrial agriculture on a massive scale and forget about the quality and the welfare and the well-being of the birds? And I think that's a very poor way of answering what biosecurity is. So we mm -hmm. tend to get the balance wrong in very simple terms between inside and outside if we just focus on the barriers. 